Welcome everybody to Wolf and Shafa podcast. My name is Magdalena Wolf and this is my little co-host Domara. Now, I'll just let him sit down there with his other friends so you can see while I'm here. Uh, we have uh, Monday, March 21st of 2016. The spring has begun and uh, I am back to Switzerland. Just yesterday I came back from Edinburgh and this episode will be mostly about Edinburgh a Yarn Fest 2016. But just so that uh, you know, um, you can find me on Ravelry under Wolfovna, which spells W-O-L-F-F-O-W-N-A. And I'm on Instagram under my full name, which is uh, without any dots inside, Magdalena Wolf with two F's at the end, because how my name is spelled. Um, if you're a returning viewer, thanks so much for joining me again uh, during my um, knitting, spinning and hand dyeing uh, adventure <laughs> weekly. And if you're a new viewer, thanks so much for checking out my show and please, please feel at home. I uh, live in Switzerland, I'm Polish and um, I welcome to you to my podcast. <laughs> uh, oh, I wanted to mention that we also have a Ravelry group, Volkful Shopper Podcast Group, and there is a knit along going on. Um, it's a Song of Ice and Fire slash Game of Thrones knit along, and you can win one skein uh, of my yarn uh, in Song of Ice and Fire themed colorway, which is Melisandre. So this is the prize, Wolfen Schaffe Yarn, uh, on my Belladonna base, which means uh, Merino Nylon Cashmere Blend. It's very soft and squishy and flamey. Um, I, have, I have prolonged the um, deadline for the, the knit along, so it's still May 3rd when uh, it's my birthday. So. Please feel free to join because there is still a lot of time left and we need more participants. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so I will quickly uh, talk about my knitting and spinning, but um, then I will talk about Eden Yard Fest. So, um, okay, this one. Mm, on the plane, I was able to work on my uh, Rombay sweater by Terry Crews, and this is how far I am. This is the lovely diamond motif, like an accent on the back, that will be there. And yeah, I'm going from top down <coughs> here. I just, I just finished the diamond motif, so I will be removing these, but these are my uh, stitch markers. This is, that I, I made this one, this is Aladdin's lamp. And here, here I have my progress keeper, in fact, that I brought from Paris with Eiffel Tower and a light debug. So um, I'm knitting the, this on the three millimeter needles and the yarn is Debbie Bliss uh, Cashmerino, uh, which, is, which is a sport weight yarn. I suppose it will take me some time, but, but well. For now I'm liking the, the pattern, it has like it has nice, like, uh, fake seaming because this is just uh, increasing here. It's knit from back for the sleeves. And the colorway uh, of the yarn is mist. 
This is the colorway that my friend Iga chose because this will be for her for making me this fabulous uh, kimono wear accessory that you saw in the previous episodes. If you have not seen it and you want to see me in a kimono, please watch episode 10. By the way, it's episode 11. I don't think I have mentioned that. Sorry. <laughs> I'm still a bit, um, you know, uh, under the influence of the, the festival fumes. So <laughs> I might be forgetting things. I have so many things to show you guys today. It's, it's going to be crazy. So this is my one project. But for... Um, like knitting meetups in, in, in a bar or just in the lounge during the um, a festival, I chose a project that, that I can mindlessly just knit, not thinking about any patterning whatsoever. So I took my socks that I showed you. I just had tips of the toes last time. Now I have a little bit more. Because it's not like I was knitting really a lot during the festival because I had other things to do. But yes, these are um, just plain vanilla socks on uh, A. Mary Knits hand dyed yarn in uh, Autumn Desert Flowers colorway. And the colors are in fact a bit brighter than you can see on the camera, but we have a foggy day today in Zurich. Well, in a town near Zurich anyway, where I live. That's where I live. <laughs> um, so yes, I could just, I have just recently actually uh, learned how to knit without, like a uh, simple just stop stuck in it in the round i can knit without looking at what i'm doing which is great when you're watching a movie or a podcast or you want to like talk to someone and keep the eye contact this is really really good <laughs> for that mm, and this is very soft and squishy really many people were asking me uh during the festival what yarn this is so i think i mentioned that in the last episode's show notes but it's yeah the liar uh, she is my favorite project bag maker and she also dyes yarn so uh it's a mary m a r i e knits together on etsy Okay, and I'm knitting on my 2.5 millimeter Chao Gu uh, needles with a long cable, which is 120 centimeters. And here is my foot, because I'm planning on making a uh, fish lips kiss heel. And as for my spinning, um, just before going to Edinburgh, I spun this. I finished spinning this. Please focus, dear camera. Now, okay. So, as you can see, uh, it's uh, two colored yarn. Uh, both colors are natural. This is not dyed yarn. And the dark one is the um, here with, with this with this uh, very light color. It looks like it's black, but in fact this is very dark brown, like a dark chocolate brown. And this is um, some kind of a Polish ship uh, that I got in my in my pack uh, with my spindle. There were various um, like. Uh, fleeces of various sheep and in this uh, my spindle was packed so I don't know exactly what uh, what are the names of these sheep but I know it's from all were from Poland and the light color is um, British sheep Romney 
and I spun them together because I thought it would be fun and it looks actually really fun. It's, it's a tiny little skein, it has only 14 grams. Mm. But yeah, I think it's fun and I added Romney to make this uh, dark one, to make the yarn less uh, rough and scratchy because the dark one itself is is pretty coarse so but it's still interesting to spin various fibers um, so this is basically it for my spinning and uh, now I get to talk about the adding yarn fest just a sip of tea mm. And so it starts. This is one of my purchases. And I just had to buy it because of of the <laughs> of the motto you have here. It's so funny. I couldn't resist. And it's from Barami. You knit happy. Ah. Knit Yorkshire. But yes, of course. <coughs> no woman, no plan. <laughs> I thought this was brilliant. So the first day I saw this on the uh, Barami uh, stand, I was like, oh, I want this mug, but if I buy it, maybe it will break in my luggage. So maybe not. Uh. But the next day I saw it. And actually, they almost ran out of them by the end of the second day. I thought, okay, I have to have it. I just have to buy it. It's too brilliant to pass, pass it. So um, this is my lovely, lovely mug. I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm happy. Extremely. <laughs> and the tea. Oh, the tea is actually the tea that uh, Kristen from Yarngasm and Woolen Vine Yarns mentioned in her last episode. Uh, it's this. Hi Christine, I have a twin bag of this tea because when I was buying for you I bought also one for myself. Uh, so the tea is um, Herbata Varta Poznania which means uh, Herbata uh, means tea because this world, word comes from um, herbal, like tea herb, a uh, herb called tea, which states, states as ta. So it's herbata, is the tea, and varta poznania means uh, worthy of knowing, of meeting, so it's worth to get to know this tea, and I agree, I agree completely. Um, so yeah, I was so happy when I saw uh, Kristen drinking my tea on her podcast because I was yesterday I was going back from the festival and I had to wor wait for my second plane in Amsterdam on the airport and they have pretty good free Wi-Fi there. So of course I turned on my favorite Kristen. <laughs> and yes, and just at the beginning of the episode there was my tea. So, mm. Yum. and yes, you cannot blame Kristen for not knowing the Polish pronunciation, because how would she know? Uh, but yes, yeah, the name has been explained. Um, okay, tea, mug, where was I? <sighs> the festival, it was awesome. It was just awesome. It was my first um, big festival. I've been to one before, which was, I don't know, three times smaller in Zug here in Switzerland. So this was my like first experience with something like this, and I was amazed. It was absolutely awesome. And... Um, the atmosphere of this event is incredible. Like, you just meet people around and you start talking to them with, without any problem at all. Everyone is nice to you, everybody's smiling, 
and you feel like a part of a, of the community, which is like because it is a special yarn and fiber lovers community. Um, but I, I had never had I have never had such an opportunity before. So so I was really I was just so happy, and I talked to so many people just like that. And some of them I met at the marketplace, some just simply in the lounge where, where there were tables and you could sit and drink coffee or tea or actually eat a warm dish, which I really liked because I like my lunch to be hot. <laughs> and this way I just, I just met so many new people. I met some of my friends that I have known from before and through them I also met uh, new people it was just it was just amazing and you you could also like see people going to to the corn exchange building where the festival was uh, you could spot knitters like carrying the bags and knitwear on, on their necks and, and heads. It was just so, we were so visible. Mm, I must say, uh, it was very well organized. It was not the first uh, festival in Edinburgh, so they already had some experience. They knew what will be needed, and I think they did it really, really well. So, great. Thank you, uh, dear organizers. You were awesome. Um, oh, what else? What else? I was so amazed by all those people uh, 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 on the festival walking around in wonderful hand knitted cardigans or jumpers or uh, shawls or even uh, uh, even dresses. It was like, you know, you, you didn't know where to look because there was something interesting everywhere and on top of that you had the marketplace where there were fabulous yarns and fibers and other uh, yarn connected products I was just the first day was really even though I did not go to sleep very late I just slept like a log there were so many attractions and emotions going on that I just <laughs> so um, I wanted to say hello to everyone who spoke to me during the festival if you are watching I was so so happy to be able to meet you and talk to you and uh, then keep in touch because we exchanged our uh, Ravelry or Instagram names so we can still like keep in touch and it's it was wonderful you people are wonderful and I was I was so happy to be the part of your community of our community it was so amazing um, so uh, there was uh, there were many famous people there among them, of course, Stephen West, you probably know him, and uh, at his stand, I think he had at least two people helping him, because everybody had to have uh, someone to help them, because uh, in order not to leave your stand alone, when you wanted to go and eat something or to the toilet, you just, you just couldn't manage as one person so everybody had at least one person helping them and there were larger stands that had whole teams so uh, at Stephen West's uh, stand uh, they were awarding people who were passing by uh, and whenever they spotted a piece of knitwear they liked they were uh, awarding people by this so the better of this ribbon has been awarded a style award for awesomeness in knitwear. Stephen and Penelope, fine yarns, Amsterdam. <laughs> that was such a nice gesture, really. So my 
Wilde mm, Smear uh, Shawl, designed by Kristen, <laughs> got this award. So I was walking with this. And um, many people actually asked me about this shawl. They really loved them, the, uh, really loved it, both the design and, uh, and my colorway, which was Vodnik because it was my hand dyed yarn and the beads and it was my first project with beads so I was so proud to walk around in it mm. and uh, yeah so so many fabulous yarn I did not know before or some that I didn't know from before and I really was happy that I can finally lay my claws on them there is uh, Valentina from Snail Yarns. She was in Zug uh, on the Swiss Wool Festival that I was on last year. Mm. And because on the fe that festival I did not want to spend too much money, I ended up not buying her yarn, even though it was gorgeous. So there, uh, after that, I deeply regretted <laughs> that I did not buy any of hers because I saw my other friends from our Zurich uh, meetup knitting on her yarn and I was like <laughs> <laughs> so um, so I made it I, I learned like in advance that she will be there in Edinburgh so I it was like one of the, the stands I had to go to and buy something so of course uh, I went there it was pretty busy at first stand because she has lovely lovely yarns so I'm happy that I managed to fulfill <laughs> my dream about other things there were so many designers there were stands with patterns and uh, their um, knitwear hanging around on, on, on the stands uh, so you could clearly see it and it was just marvelous um, and uh, yeah there were, there were fibers it, uh, there were spinning wheels and a nice gentleman there uh, it was uh, the wet blown uh, stand he uh, offered that I can try and have a go on their uh, one of their the spinning wheels and I was a bit too shy it was so crowded around and I felt like mm, I've never tried spinning on the wheel before so I was a bit shy about it so he said do not worry uh, please come tomorrow afternoon there will be less people and you can have a go and be less uh, you know stressed about it so that's what I did and we went both uh, with Justyna because I, w uh, I met with Justyna Lorkowska there and um, she has her own wheel already so she she could just have a go on another model of another brand and I was a total green newbie and uh, <laughs> at first it was quite hard. I had problems even joining the, the fiber to the, to the thread that was already there uh, uh, on the bobbin. And I thought, no, this is too hard. It's, I, I won't be able to do that. It's just, mm, on the spindle, it's so much easier because there I also had to use my feet to, you know, to spin the wheel. So it was, it was not um, completely uh, effortless for me. But at some moment, I just, I just caught the uh, hang of it, and I was like in a trance, you know. I just started mm, spinning and spinning, and just in a few minutes, I spun such, a, such a like. A large piece of fiber that would take me much much longer on my spindle to spin so I thought mm. 
Actually, I was thinking about buying a wheel already a long time before, but I never uh, decided to buy it in the end because I never had the opportunity to try it. Because what if I bought a spinning wheel and then it turned out, no, it's not for me. It would be, well, a waste of money because a spinning wheel is quite an investment. So, so I had a go, I loved it, and I have to have a wheel. Now, I want it badly. So yes, uh, what else, uh, what else? There were many classes available on, on Eden Yarn Fest, but I was, um, for a long time I was not sure whether I will be able to go, so I did not book any classes and then they were gone. Exactly just like uh, the Scottish dancing uh, party that was um, going on on Friday and I heard it was awesome but uh, the tickets were sold sold out in one day and I was too late. So, hmm, a pity but um, yeah, it still was just great. I loved it. I, I loved it all. What, I, what else should I talk about? So yeah, well, I suppose the classes were very interesting and good. Justina herself had two classes and she was teaching, for example, um, how to knit her way, which is uh, Eastern European style and is uh, pretty fast. So she said that um, she happened to have like whole her class or her whole her group was a group of throwers so they were totally because eastern european style is like also like continental uh, you hold your yarn on your left hand so to switch from the right hand to left hand in three hours i think it was hard but she said at after these three hours, they all got the hang of it and they could do it. So that was a great success. Um, yes, I also met with my friend Anya, whom I met in Sud before. She lives also in Switzerland, but a bit far away in Geneva. And I met with some viewers. Hello. It was so nice to see you. And so many people. Uh, like hand dyers, designers, artists, I was I was amazed, and just like passionate knitters too. Everybody was just great. Um, if you have any questions, please ask because my head is still a bit spinning. And at the end of the episode, I will attach a small material with photos from from the festival so you can see like at least a little bit how it was mm. oh, yay. okay so I think now uh, <laughs> now is the part when I show you what I have purchased and I think I will start with fiber because I have l uh, less fiber than yarn actually uh, so yes, okay. What do I have here? So after I had a go at the spinning wheel, I instantly went to one stand where they had fiber and purchased like 200 grams more than I already had because I was like, must have. And it's such a good opportunity to buy fiber. They were selling it uh, like... Um, they had scales and they had like huge metal barrels filled with fiber and you would say 200 grams of this please or there was a lady who said five kilos of this <laughs> and I was like Whoa -hoo! that's a lot I am just okay so there was a, a stand of Adelaide Walker and she had lovely 
natural uh, fibers. They're a cute sheep. And, oh, come on, camera. Okay, okay. So, Cardale, 100 grams. And the other one that I got was, oh, he's so, so soft. Um, it was Blue Face Lester, also 100 grams. And also on her stand, I bought um, a spindle. Mm, because I was searching for a spindle for a friend. Excuse me, I have some fiber here. <laughs> so, hello, Agatha. <laughs> uh, she is Aman Amanita Nitz on Ravelry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, she designs knitwear. You can check her out. Her projects are beautiful. And she just wants to start with spinning on a spindle. But sadly, in Poland, we don't have... Um, wide range of beginner spindles so uh, she just wanted to have something not very expensive but good quality and uh, I said okay I'm going to that festival I will look for something for you and I ended up buying two because <laughs> I love that one so much that I bought one for myself as well but please check it out it's a wheel <laughs> and I talk, talked to the lady at the stand and she actually said that they recommend this spindle for beginners and I understand why because I just I bought this the first day and I had to try it out just after I got back uh, to the place where I was staying because I, I just had to <laughs> I had to see how it works and it spins and spins and spins endlessly. It's wonderful. I'm so happy I bought it. So it also has a little notch. Where is it? Oh, yes. It has a little notch to help your yarn uh, not slip uh, on the whorl. It's a top whorl and, and it's lovely. It's in na natural wood. We have a hook. So uh, the fiber that I started spinning is Oakland. This beautiful, beautiful bread. It's extremely soft. It's my first um, experience with Falkland. And um, it is by Porpoise Fur, like this cute, cute dolphin. And, and the lady who, who is uh, the dyer behind it, she calls herself a mad scientist. And I think she will be having also a fiber club connected to um, scientist women. And this is uh, four ounces, which is around 113 grams. Mm. And it has these lovely pa icy pale blues and purples together with really strong, uh, also purples and blues. So it's was wonderful and uh, the colorway is called Keridwen. I think I hope I'm pronouncing properly as far as I know it's a name of a Celtic goddess who was um, the type of a goddess that you would call the crone meaning um, an old wise uh, scary <laughs> goddess <laughs> Uh, with, with a pot so I was I was delighted like double delighted because I really really loved this colorway and then I read on on the tag that it's actually connected to myths which I absolutely love so then when I got home I started spinning I just I just snatched a, 
a bit from from the braid and tried it out. It spins really nicely, really nicely, and it's very soft also after spinning. So I don't know what I can do with it, but I'm I'm really really happy with my purchase. I actually wanted to buy more from her, but hmm, you will see why I didn't. I had other things. I had really a lot of things, simply. So, I also bought this small little from Spin Pretty. And <laughs> she was actually funny. She said, Oh, I did not label them properly. I don't remember what's here, but like many things probably. So I don't ex uh, exactly know what is here, but it's incredibly soft and has beautiful colors and it's around one ounce. So 28 grams. And it's again, you can you can get my number here, like it's blues and purples together. It's like, ah! <laughs> it's soft. It's so soft. Um, but that's not all yet. That's not all. I also bought, as I said, this, is, this was all at the first day on Friday. And then... Oh, by the way, I also bought this bag. It's already a bit uh, wrinkled, but I love this bear. Knitting for All Co. UK. It's so cute! They had t-shirts for kids and I regretted that they had only like a bigger, like from three or four years old, because my two-year-old would look so cute in such a shirt, but it, they were just too big for him, so... It's, it's a convenient bag for my spinning projects. So now, sorry for the crinkling. So, after having a go on the second day on the spinning wheel, uh, and as I said, it was like late, like close to the end of the festival, and I decided I need more fiber. Because I loved spinning on, this, on the wheel so much. So I stopped by John Arvon Textiles. And I purchased... Oh, this one is amazingly soft. This is a ha around 100 grams of, mm, of merino and mulberry silk. And you can see... How it glows, the silk is really, really beautiful. Oh, come on, camera. Come on, camera. Yeah. You can see the silk in it. And and this this is Polworth, also around hundred grams. I think it's more because or maybe or maybe the other light walker hundred gram mm, packages were just more stuffed, I don't know, because this was just like loose in those huge metal barrels and they would just take it out weigh it okay this is more or less that so mm -hmm. so this is this is also very soft and i know paul was from my yarn from my medina base but i have never spun with it so yay this is all my fibers Whew. And we are not close to the end because next is yarn. Okay, maybe maybe first I will show you other things. Yay! I have finally purchased sock blockers because I really love knitting socks. I think I will like usually have a pair on the you know, on the needles. Um, so it was like, well, they are expensive. I won't. I don't really need them because when I uh, when I wash them and put them flat, they dry pretty prettily. But then I thought, okay, but if I want to knit lacy 
socks like with a lace pattern than what it needs to be stretched and also it will be more convenient on the show to present the the socks to you so I finally decided that I will purchase it and also like we say in Polish you live only once <laughs> treat yourself <laughs> <laughs> so since we live only once and I was on the festival with this special special atmosphere I said okay just okay no woman no ply yum so yes we also um, Anya from Geneva and me we stopped by um, the knitting goddess stand and I purchased this gorgeous gorgeous skein of yarn I'm in love with these colors it's just amazing and here you can see the label I like the logo a lot it's so uh, pagan new age style it's lovely and this is this is sock yarn because what I do when I love somebody's yarn but I don't have any project in mind I just want a skein from them I buy sock yarn because I can always knit a pair of socks <laughs> mm, so yes this is 75% um, superwash wool 25% nylon but um, it's the wool is 45% BFL and 30% other uh, British wool blend and it's just awesome it has these teals and greens and deep deep purples even you know what even my husband said oh wow this is amazing and he's not really sensitive to yarn <laughs> <laughs> as you can imagine so I purchased this and also uh, she had lovely lovely buttons that you could buy either one for one pound or five uh, no or six for five pounds so we shared with Anya and each of us chose three and of course I bought myself this this is the first one this is the second one. Oh, come on, camera. Come on, camera. Yeah, I knit so I don't kill people. <laughs> and the third one, which I really loved. I already put it on my project bag. Come on, come on. Knitters are an intelligent life form. <laughs> sure there are, they are, but I thought it was just brilliant. Uh, so we bought these and I purchased that skein of yarn. And uh, next up, uh, I bought this wonderful, lovely bag from Teapot Trust. They were there. Um, on the on the festival and whole money from from the their products would go to um, their mission which is um, for uh, it, which is to teach knitting and I think also crochet to um, very very ill children as a form of therapy so uh, I thought it's it's a great cause and the bag is also great and I love tea and I like butterflies so, <laughs> so it was a perfect choice as you see is www.teapottrust.org and it's a very sturdy bag and it has a really nice handle so I used it for uh, carrying my uh, purchases around which was very useful um, oh yes 
I think my first purchase on the festival was a soap because I've seen these soaps on the internet before like the soap uh, inside a felted layer and this was just so cute the puppies so this is this is just uh, dove uh, soap inside uh, of merino felt felted wool and yes the, the, their name is felting studio you can see their logo here and I haven't used it yet so I could see it so I could show it to you <laughs> in in like untouched shape but I will definitely start using it after I record. <laughs> um, yeah, so the idea is that you're using the soap, but the layer of felt stays there. So you use up like the soap till the very, very end. And also what is good about um, wool on your soap is that it, it doesn't hold germs. So it's different to other um, I don't know the word what is this thing you wash yourself with like a piece of cloth or something they can they can uh, the germs can develop on their surface whilst on this they won't because of special uh, features that wool has so yay awesome this is awesome. Um, I think I showed you. Okay, this back you have seen already. My bear. Very bear. And now I think it's time for yarn, finally. I'm just checking here around. So let's start, shall we? This. This is yarn by Valentina from Snail Yarn. She is Italian. She has really a really cute logo. And she actually uh, explained to me that when she was small, her teacher would uh, call her, like, um, divide her name into Valentina, I think. If I'm mixing something up, I'm sorry, but it made something like slower, be slow. And she thought that she actually is slow, so maybe a snail will be a good uh, like uh, logo for her brand. And also, I don't know if you've seen her on Etsy, but she arranges the yarn in the spirals that resembles a snail shell. And the colors are just amazing. I had two skeins in my hands and I couldn't, for like a longer time, I could not decide completely which one to choose because it was just so hard. This one that I bought is Fairyland colorway and it's 100% superwash merino, 400 yards, 366 meters. And um, the other one, I think, was Northern Lights or something like this. It was also very colorful, but uh, with different colors. So oh, it was also beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. So I'm happy I have it. Next, okay, next is... My first time with Vormeise because we don't we don't have Vormeise in Switzerland, which is strange because we have most of the German uh, yarns. But yes, um, I don't know if if you're familiar with it, but they used to mm, twist the yarn really really hard, so it's really dense. But I decided I, I feel sorry for the yarn, so I just I just loosened it. And this is a both sock yarn, and it's a uh, hundred and fifty grams. 
and it's 80% wool superwash merino superwash wool and 20% uh, nylon mm. this colorway is called uh, flower power camera focus faster okay it's flower power and this one I thought I could knit a pair of socks or maybe even two because it's such a large skein for Gleb for my husband because it's um, <laughs> it's definitely a more a more serious color than this and it's called Potz Blitz if any of you German speaking uh, viewers could tell me what this means I would be grateful because I don't know this word pot splits but, but yes I have finally um, my wool miser oh I also got their uh, wool uh, washing mm, something like soak or eucalyptus but <laughs> I did not bring it with me like a really small just to try it out together with my purchase I just got it as a present and I got a candy which was very nice <laughs> uh, so yes these are amazing there were so many colors I wanted to purchase it was it was so hard it was so hard people <laughs> really you have to be really strong to decide there was because th these are really bright colors and then there was one colorway that I like that had more, more subtle colors with a little bit of pink and pale gray, uh, green but I decided I want socks like this this is just mad <laughs> so in the end I picked this one and I also stopped by Skin Queen and she had this cute colliver with a crown on his head hello hello okay it's not gonna focus so this is 80% superwash merino and 20% silk very soft uh, slinky twist it's called and I actually don't see uh, colorway name there is none or is there no I don't see but anyway this skin was um, laying on top of uh, other colorways and it like it was the only one and I was like it must be mine mine so I bought it it's gorgeous it has grays and yellows and speckles of rust you can see it and it has this lovely glow from the silk content uh, so I'm thinking about a shawl from this it would be nice mm -hmm. yes so this was my yarn on the first day and on the second day I was much more self-resistant so I only purchased two skeins but from the one dyer which was uh, Old Maiden Out here you can see it has this awesome logo of yeah as you can see 100% superwash merino for, for fly I picked these two for a show, some kind of shawl not decided yet what kind of shawl this will be but I think they will look amazing together because this is really rich rusty brown and the colorway is called far dari or Darif, I don't know, I can't read. <laughs> um, and this one is oh, Blackbird 
and it also has some like local name which is long dub dub no dub oh if you know what how to read this please tell me okay but it's blackbird which is black basically and has a nice yellow beak and it sings really nicely uh, and what I like about I don't know if you can see it on the camera but this is this is very dark blue but it's it's a bit broken blue which I really love it has a bit of grayish tones to it but also some greenish tones which makes it uh, really amazing and I think they, they look together great and there was uh, at the at this uh, stand there was a trunk filled with skeins and you could just pick them up and match I had an, another skein in my hand but then I found this one and, and just I switched I knew from the start I want this one and then uh, when I found this one, I, I left the other one and decided on this. Actually, uh, the lady who was uh, helping on that stand, um, because they were together, the uh, dyer and um, the other lady was uh, creating uh, like felt decorations, for example, like buttons. She was very nice and I asked her for advice, so she helped me pick. Um, and I think this will be nice nice and this is all people I think finally this is all if I forgot something well it happens oh uh, in the background you can see as usual uh, there is my Domarat but and uh, the felted Totoro that my friend Kristin uh, uh, Christine, sorry, uh, made for me, and there is a uh, pirate George from Peppa Pig because I is um, I understand it's a British uh, TV animation show, mm, and my son loves it, so I thought I will bring him uh, a character from from one of his favorite shows. So now I think I will insert, I still have to prepare it, so I don't know what exactly will be there. Uh, but now you will be able to see my short material from, from the festival itself. So, thank you very much. Oh, come on here. Uh -uh. <laughs> thank you very much for tuning in. Where are you going? Um, to my show. And I hope to see you next time. Happy knitting and enjoy the festival material. Bye! <laughs>
was so touching. <laughs> I miss you guys. Uh, I forgot to say that I really loved the architecture of Edinburgh. I felt like in a steampunk city. This was amazing. It's beautiful in this special, special steampunky way. And I also lived near an um, old graveyard. You can see uh, some pictures in the materials. And I thought it's awesome that they have like old crosses with those Celtic decorations. Um, so I added them to the material. And um, yes, I highly recommend Edinburgh. I will be coming back there because I did not uh, get to see too much because I was busy with, with the festival and um, probably I will go again for just for sightseeing. And that is all and happy knitting! <laughs>